Sharon, I... Can you give us a metric or I suppose? How many closer to this here? I'm there, Sherry. <laughs> Where's Brayden? By Grandpa. Okay. Of course, yes. You guys want to give me just face me like that and then you can stand right next to her? That way. Well, a lot of excitement today, right? <laughs> so, Woo we continue the day then in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ came as an invited guest to a wedding in Cana, and with his presence at that wedding, he brought joy and gladness to those who were there. And we trust that Jesus is with us here today. We're gathered in his name to make this kind of commitment, and so we ask his blessing on our time here and on the, the marriage commitment that you are making to each other right now. Uh, and we ask that. Loving Father, we're grateful for your goodness in permitting us to gather as the family and friends of Ryan and Kathy to share their joy on a special day. Look on them with favor, strengthen their confidence in your firm promises, and assure them of your abiding love. As your son Jesus graced the wedding that came in with his presence, so may he be with us who pray in his name. Amen. I was going to read just uh, two different portions of, of God's word in the Bible uh, that I think are fitting on a day like today. First of all, from 1 John chapter 3, it really talks about what love is and where love, more importantly, comes from idea that was made up by this world. Really, love isn't how we generally define it in this world. Love is something that is completely self-sacrificing, completely self-giving. It's something that we receive from God, and it's that that we receive that we should share with each other, especially in marriage. He writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as a sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. And that is God's word. Also from Ruth chapter 1, and we'll just meditate in, in devotion on these words for a brief time this morning as well. Uh, we hear a, a commitment similar to the kind of commitment that you're going to make in just a moment, a uh, kind of commitment that a man makes for his wife. Kind of interesting. This isn't uh, being spoken by a man to his wife or a wife to her husband. It's being spoken actually by a woman to her mother. Um, when you look at the kind of commitment she makes, it's pretty striking you know, to think that, that in a relationship of, of in-law that sometimes can be a stressed one, uh, there's such dedication and love. And that was because of how important she viewed her commitment that she had made to her husband. Now that he was gone, she was continuing to make the same kind of commitment to his mother, and uh, one that was going to be blessed ultimately by God. This is what she says. Don't urge me to leave you, or to turn away from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. And again, that is God's word. To the family and friends of Brian and Kathy, but more specifically, the both of you today. I wonder if, uh, if you had an opportunity to go on Family Feud, and um, the category came up, uh, things associated with the wedding. And they had like the top five things after interviewing a hundred people that were listed on there. I imagine some of the things that you'd hear would be 
wedding dress, tuxedo, flowers, cake, things like that. Until only a minute ago, we didn't have any of those. <laughs> We've got flowers now. Those are the things that people often associate with weddings. You're doing a wedding without most of those things. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so either. Uh, because I think often people focus on some of those things, the wedding, the uh, flowers, the dress, the cake, the meal, all the things that are fun but really are not important when it comes to the course of a marriage. And then they don't focus on the one thing that's needed for a wedding and the one thing that's needed for marriage. And that's a commitment. That's what you have to do. Even though you don't have maybe a lot of those other things, and, and maybe one day next year or somewhere down the road you'll have those things and we'll celebrate that way. But today you have the most important thing. And that is the promise that you're going to make to each other. A promise very similar to the, the one that was just written there in Luke chapter 1. That could be a hard commitment to me. I think increasingly more in our world, we're really, I guess, adverse to making commitments in our life. Whether it's with a, a cell phone bill or even with another person. We just don't like to commit to what if, is always in our mind, what if I find somebody else? What if things go wrong? What if, what if, what if? And so we don't make that promise. We don't want to be tied down. I find really that's the reason a lot of people today are against getting married. They just love each other. They're happy having a family together, but they don't want to be tied down. And I get that. I get the fear that goes along with, with promising yourself to somebody for life. Right? And yet, as normal as that sounds to want to not make a commitment, a marriage is really impossible without that commitment. We kind of talk about that in, in classes, right? But it's, it'd be like building a house without a foundation. We're just going to enjoy this building we have, but we're not going to have anything that's really going to hold it up. And when storms come and other things like that, and difficulties come in a relationship, without a foundation, without a commitment, that life that you build together is going to come crashing down, and how often does that happen in the world? That's why I think it's so great that that was the only thing you were concerned about. Not saying, well, let's just wait until we can get all those things, but saying, where are we building our life now? Let's put a foundation under as soon as we possibly can. What a blessing that's going to be. As scary as it is, it's going to be such a blessing. Um, all those things that are mentioned there are going to be blessings. That's the kind of thing that you can say to each other, where you go, I will go. You're not going to be alone anymore. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. In marriage, you have a, a lifelong companion that's really going to have your back for life, or at least should. Wherever you go, whatever you do, that person is going to be there with you. They're going to be your rock that you should be able to lean on in any situation. That's a blessing. That's not a bad thing to be committed to somebody in that way. Because your people are going to be my people. Well, you guys already have your own people, don't you? Yeah. He was just baptized a, a, a few minutes ago. But now there's going to be such an added blessing. Because uh, the, the people of Kathy and the people of Brian are now going to be joined together. And as much as they not like it down there, that they're not kind of united with these people, you are. And you guys are going to be able to share joys in life because you now are this united bond. And what a blessing that's going to be for your people, for Elias. Because he had a mom and a dad, and that's so important. But you guys are no longer going to be just mom and dad. You're also going to be husband and wife. You're going to give him that kind of security that can only happen inside of a marriage. 
You're going to give him an example of what he's going to do someday when he's going to meet the woman of his dreams. And not going to just kind of play loose with her, but to commit to her and to build a family and a home the very same way that you're setting that example for them now to do. And really the greatest blessing is the one that she said, she said, your God is going to be my God. Your lives have changed in the last month. I mean, I didn't know you a month ago, but here you are, you know, about to become members of the church. I mean, you guys both said you hadn't been in the church in a long time. You guys are, are regularly studying the Bible, at least with me right now. You guys are, are at a point where you're willing to make a commitment to each other in the eyes of God and, and your witnesses here. You guys are, are baptizing your child. That's... That's a great change. I, I hope you appreciate that. That's not something that, that anybody can just do. That's the power of God that's working in you. That's, that's a kind of faith that's going to last until the end. That's a kind of faith in Jesus who forgave you that makes you right to stand before God when you die someday. Now that's the kind of commitment, that's the kind of foundation, one of faith in God, especially in Jesus, that is going to make your marriage a blessing. Because even though you make the commitment, the difficulties are going to come. You're going to screw up. You're going to do it today, I guarantee you. <laughs> You're going to make him mad. You're going to do that today again too. And that's going to be every last day of your life. But we've talked about that. Things are going to be good at times. Things are going to be bad sometimes. But if you build on Christ and your faith in him, even though your feelings may change, your commitment never has to. And that's going to be the very thing that's going to get you through. Uh, the most important thing, you know, you guys can say to each other in a marriage is, is not what often is thought is three words of, I love you. That's important. Make sure you do that. But it's really going to be those three words, please forgive me. And then to be able to respond to one another because of Jesus, I forgive you. Love is not alone. It's the love of God that has a forgiving spirit in each other that's going to make that last. Um, I think, just kind of to close, that, that thinking about your commitment to each other with Jesus in it is, uh, is kind of like a, a triangle. So you've got Kathy and Ryan, but you've also got Jesus in that marriage. That's going to be so important because as Kathy and Ryan, if you're disconnected there, you guys can grow together closer on your own. And you guys can also grow further apart on your own. If you keep Jesus in your marriage, and that is a big part of your foundation, then you can know that as you grow closer to Jesus, you're only going to grow closer to each other. You're never going to grow farther apart if you're growing closer to Him. And that would be my prayer for your marriage going forward from this day. That as the day you make this commitment in front of Him, you would keep that as a part of Elias' life. You would keep that as a part of your life because that's the thing that's going to make this marriage last. That's going to make the thing, or be the thing that's going to make this family last. And that's going to be the thing that's going to make your faith last. And eventually then bring you to uh, the glory of heaven where this kind of a family reunion here can just go on into eternity. And uh, let's go on now with our, our commitments to each other. When God in love created the world, he made a man and a woman. He created them in his own image, and then he bonded them together in marriage. Through this blessed union of husband and wife, God established a family, provided for the physical and spiritual needs of children, fostered the peace and stability of society. You have come here to be united in marriage, which then consists in your mutual consent that is freely and willingly given. And so um, you're invited to declare this intent in front of God and the witnesses that you have gathered here today. So I'll ask you first. Brian, will you take Kathy? Be your wife. Will you be guided by the counsel and direction that God has given in His Word? 
and love your wife as Christ has loved the church. Will you be faithful to her, cherish her, support her, and help her in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Kathy, will you take Ryan to New York this week? Be guided by the counsel and direction God has given in his word and submit to your husband as Christ submits to the church. Will you be faithful to him, cherish him, support him, and help him in sickness and in health, as long as you both shall live? If so, answer that will. Join your right hands now and declare your promises to one another. Right, see that. I write your name. In the presence of God and these witnesses, in the presence of God and these take you, Kathleen Hughes, take you, Kathleen Hughes, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful. I promise to be faithful to you as long as you wish. As long as you wish. I, Kathleen, in the presence of God and these witnesses, Promises. Ryan and Kathy have bounded themselves in marriage before God and his witnesses. Therefore I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit preserve you in faithfulness, strengthen you in his love, and guide you to life's end. And let us pray. Gracious Father, help Ryan and Kathy to fulfill the promises that they have made here today and to reflect your love and their love for one another. Give them kindness and patience, affection and understanding, happiness and contentment. Use their family and friends to support them in difficult days that their love for each other may continue to grow as long as they live. In your goodness, you bring people together in their families and enrich their lives with abundant blessings. Renew the love of husbands and wives, parents and children. They may strengthen and support each other on the way that leads to our heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite everyone, if willing, to join along in praying the Lord's Prayer as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor. Includes our service to our husband and wife. We can clap for them and if you want to, you get to the button. I wish you a lifetime of happiness and God's blessings with your little boy, and I'm so glad you could get this. And, and thank you so much for having us be in your secret. We love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you always. Here, here. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I don't want the whole thing. Just no, just one bite. You're just, one bite. just one bite. Just one bite. Okay. No, please don't. Do it. Do it. <laughs> it's just a memory. You can just. <laughs> it is though. <laughs> Little bite. Little bite. Yes. Don't be afraid of it. I'm gonna smush him in my mouth because we ever get here. He's gonna have it all over his beard and everything. Right? Oh, you're too nice. Kathy, do it. Stick it up the It would have been in his. Kathy, just one picture. And she was too, you were too nice to him, huh? Don't sweat, honey. <laughs> Here, I'll get this. Oh, you are so getting payback. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what um. So the pastor said the your, words are exactly. The, that's what the pastor told yeah. you to say. <laughs> what do you think, Oh yeah. Get some yummy frosting. You want a piece of cake, huh? That's what Okay. You know what, my dad's hand hurt today. Not tight. Your nose too. Okay. Okay. We'll get that. Grandma will be for mom. Hold on. Grandma will be for mom. Yeah. She's protective of the baby. She's being really protective. Like she didn't want me by him because of germs. Okay. He's really happy by germs right now. I'm like, come here, boy. Yeah, I just had it coming. Cute little boy, though. He's got big blue eyes. I saw him earlier.